everyone and welcome to yet another ant illustration. This particular ant illustration is based off of winter and it was actually penciled back in September of 2017. The reason why I never finished it is because, well, I guess a lot of projects got in the way and I penciled it all the way back in September when I started to do these seasonal ant illustrations. This actually came from 500 Drawing Prompts number 33. It was Harvest and Pond and I think it was the third ant illustration that I did or maybe it was fourth. I think it was fourth. I cannot keep up with these. I did a fall themed ant illustration and it gave me the idea to do a seasonal ant illustration where it's the same exact scene, but because of the different seasons, things change like the pond being frozen over and generally just different activities that you do during different seasons. So I thought that would be a cute idea and I penciled this back in September and I never got around to finishing it. So I thought because it is winter, I'll go ahead and finish the winter ant illustration and then when spring comes along, I'll do the spring ant illustration and then so on with summer. So usually with these ant illustrations, I like to show the whole process with penciling in the ants and inking and coloring. But with this one, because it was already penciled, I think I actually penciled this during a live stream a while ago. I thought because my style of doing these ant illustrations has changed a little bit, I would start off by erasing a big chunk of this illustration and then adding some things into it. So something that I think is really important with these ant illustrations is having some place for your eye to rest. And I know this is something I talk about a lot often in my ant illustrations. Having a whole page just covered in a lot of ants and just a lot going on is fun. But I do think having just a spot where there's not a whole lot going on, it's kind of plain. It's nice. I think it's, it's a good contrast in these illustrations. And originally on the frozen lake, I did have just the whole thing covered in ants skating and that was cute and all, but I thought it would be nice to just have a few ants skating and just being able to see what the heck is going on over there would just be really nice. Something else I also did when I erased some stuff was that I erased a few ants to make room for some bees, if you didn't notice. I am going to try to sprinkle in some bees in my ant illustrations and I also do want to try to add some more different kind of bugs. Not just bees and ants, but I do want to start exploring with stylizing different bugs that can go into these. I think it would be fun, but I do want to keep these illustrations primarily ants because that's the whole point. Just a lot of ants. I like my ants. Something else I have noticed with my ant illustrations is that when I first started making them on the very, very first ant illustration, the ants looked a little bit different and they have definitely changed with how I draw them over time. I guess it goes with just drawing anything. You learn how you draw it and what works best. And you can definitely see that has changed with the first ant illustration I ever did compared to now. There's also a difference in the way that I pack the ants into the illustrations. So something that I did notice was early on, I liked to put those ants as close to each other as possible and fill as many ants as I could in the smallest amount of space. But nowadays I do like to space them out just a little bit so it isn't too crowded. But this illustration, it was pretty dang crowded and there were a few spaces where I just had to remove an ant and just have some breathing room because it was too crazy. But unfortunately, something I've noticed is that if I pencil something and leave it there for months, it is very, very hard to erase later on. I think I did a pretty good job erasing it and you don't really notice it with all the details in there, but it's something to consider. Try to finish your drawings in a week, especially if you're going to pencil something in, it's really hard to erase it later on. I had to break out, I think, four different types of erasers to get that lake really clean. I do like to stick with the kneaded erasers because you can kind of push it onto the paper instead of slide it across, which I find can sometimes get rid of the inking just a little bit. But because I was just completely erasing everything from the lake, I went ahead and used some other erasers that were a lot easier to rub on the paper than to just kind of blotch with the kneaded eraser. Oh man, don't you just love it when your favorite artist YouTuber talks about erasing things for one minute? It's very exciting. And of course, I cannot sit here and take credit for all of the ideas in this winter ant illustration because when I did this on the live stream, a lot of people love to give suggestions on what the ants can be doing. So a lot of these actually were ideas from my viewers. Now this was how many months ago? Five or six months ago. So I obviously don't remember who said what, plus chats always go so fast. But I do remember that the Ice Queen sculpture was someone's idea and so was the caveman ant stuck in Ice Cube. I thought those were really cute and funny ideas and I had to include them. So once all the lining was done, I did have to decide what color to make the snow. Now I didn't want to keep it just white because I thought, number one, that would be really boring. 
And number two, something about not covering the page with paint just seems kind of weird. So I did want to make a very, very watered down blue color to color the snow because number one, it would just give it a little bit of color. And number two, why do I, why am I numbering things? At first, when I started to put down the color, I was kind of regretful with how dark I made the blue. I think I made it a little darker than I wanted to, but as I went on, I think I wasn't so upset with it because it does add a little bit of color. And like I said, just, just being white would be really boring. So the snow has a bit of a blue tint to it and I do like that. And then when it came to what color to make the ants, I didn't want to make too many black slash blue ants because there was already so much blue because of the snow. So I didn't want to make too many black slash blue ants. So I did make the majority of them red ants. But then I have to say, I might regret that because it being a winter theme, you do want the colors to be kind of on the cool side because it's supposed to be cold. So I went and added all these warm red ants, which was kind of foolish. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> I think it does still capture winter. It doesn't take away anything, I don't think. But I do wonder if it would have been better if I did do the majority of them black slash blue ants to make it just a little bit cooler than it is now. But hey, maybe just more red ants go out in the winter because they're fire ants and maybe they're just naturally hot compared to regular black ants, right? That's just what I'm going to tell myself to make myself feel better and hey, you know what? There are less red ants around the fire, so it makes sense, right? I'm, I'm not making that up on the spot. That's totally what was going through my head. Speaking of fire, that is one of the few things that I do like to carry on with each of the seasonal ant illustrations. So in the original fall one, we have the lake where people are fishing and the fire where, again, they are roasting marshmallows. Who doesn't like to roast marshmallows around a campfire? It is something that you can do all year round and especially in the winter. And of course, the little detail that I put around the campfire is that the snow is melted and you see dirt around it because fire is hot. And of course, it's going to melt the snow around it. Oh, and let's not forget that one ant that's warming his booty on the fire. That's super adorable and I love it. Uh oh, it's the end of the video and I haven't given you guys the list of ants to look for in this. So let's get onto that list. Well, of course, we're going to start off with bees. So the list is 15 bees, 12 ants wearing hats, 9 ants with hot chocolate, five old ants, one ant shoveling snow, and of course, I didn't forget this time, the robber ant. So I will put that list in the description. Let me know if you found all of the ants slash bugs. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Okay, really quick, because I just wanted to talk about this really quick. I'm going to try to start pumping out a lot of ant illustrations. So if you like the videos, let me know and I'll keep making them. If not, I will just work on them on my own. But making an ant illustration book is something that I really want to do. So it's something I'm going to be working harder at and trying to make more of these illustrations in one month. So let me know. Do you like these videos? Do you not like them? Here's a poll. Bye.